In the first three videos for this week, I defined eigenvalues and eigenvectors and showed how to calculate them. In the last video for this week, I want to extend the idea to a particular abstract vector space. Last week, I defined abstract vector spaces. The key idea behind abstract vector spaces is that other parts of mathematics, such as functions and polynomials, benefit from the language of linear algebra. I can talk about spans, linear combinations, linear independence, all these things, even though the other objects are not vectors. They just have to act a little bit like vectors. Well, the same is true for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I can also extend the idea, these ideas to an abstract vector space. And I want to give a very important and a little bit familiar example of this. Therefore, consider the set C infinity of R which is the set of all differentiable functions with domain real numbers. The infinity here means that these functions can be differentiated any number of times. These are single variable functions from calculus, things like sine x, e to the x, polynomials such as x cubed minus 4x plus 1, anything that is defined for all real numbers and is differentiable. The function x squared minus 5 over x squared plus 7 is in C infinity of R. Since it has domain, domain R, there is no division by 0 here, x squared plus 7 is always positive. The function ln x is not in C infinity of R, since its domain only includes the positive real numbers. Alright, this is an abstract vector space. I can add these functions and multiply them by scalars and still be in the same space. It obeys the rules of linearity. So, what is a linear transformation on this abstract vector space? Well, there are many, but let me consider this one, d over dx. This is an operator that takes derivatives. And I can consider this as a transformation on c infinity of r. Is it linear? Well, think back to the derivative rules. I can pull a constant out of the derivative. The derivative of a times f of x is a times the derivative df dx. And I can also split up a derivative over sums. The derivative of the f plus g is the derivative of f df dx plus the derivative of g dg dx. The derivative is linear, and I even called it linear in calculus. It's the same idea, so it makes sense to give it the same name. The derivative is a linear operation on functions. So I have an abstract vector space, the differentiable functions, and a linear transformation the derivative. I've just done eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and I can write down the same definition here. The eigenvalue eigenvector definition says that the transformation sends the vector to a multiple of itself. Well, I don't have vectors anymore, but I can still write this down. Now it says, for what function is the derivative a multiple of the original function? This is a calculus question, and I know the answer the exponential functions. The derivative of e to the alpha x is alpha times e to the alpha x, using the chain rule for the derivative of the inside. Instead of an eigenvector here, since this is not a vector, I'll call this an eigenfunction. e to the alpha x is an eigenfunction of the derivative operator, with eigenvalue alpha. Now I have to be careful, there's actually one more eigenfunction. The eigenvalue can be 0, so I also want to know what functions have derivative of 0, while the derivative of a constant is 0. So the constant function is also an eigenfunction of the derivative operator, with eigenvalue 0. The linear algebra language applies here. It also turns out to be very useful. In many places in differential equations and other branches of calculus, the eigenfunctions of some differential operator are the building blocks of the various algorithms and constructions. They are important, and I access them by adapting linear algebra to new abstract vector spaces. The perspective of the derivative as a linear transformation of an abstract vector space is absolutely fundamental. I have the simple derivative d over dx, but I can also make many more linear transformations out of derivatives and ask for their eigenfunctions. I can use higher derivatives, and I can use multiplication by constants. 
the operator negative one times the second derivative is also a linear transformation on the abstract vector space of differentiable functions. What are its eigenfunctions? Well, there are some functions f such that the second derivative of f multiplied by negative one is a multiple of the original function f. What function does this? Well, thinking back to my derivative patterns in calculus, the derivative of a sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So two derivatives of sine are negative sine. Maybe this will work. And in fact, it does. The eigenfunction here is sine of the square root of lambda times x. If I differentiate this twice, I get negative sine. But each of the two derivatives needs a chain rule, and each time the derivative of the inside is root lambda. So I get root lambda multiplied by this twice, which is just lambda. Then cancelling off the negative shows that the result is lambda times the sine of root lambda times x. This is an eigenfunction. If I apply this particular derivative, I get the original function multiplied by a constant. Similarly, I can do this with cosine, and I'll leave you to double check the derivatives if you wish. In this case, there are two linearly independent eigenfunctions, sine and cosine. Sine is not a multiple of cosine, nor is cosine a multiple of sine. So for any lambda, there are two linearly independent eigenfunctions. Here is one more. The linear transformation here is x over 2 times the derivative. This means take the derivative and then multiply by x over 2. And you can check if you wish. This is still linear. It still satisfies both of the linearity rules. What are the eigenfunctions of this transformation? Well, I'm looking for some f such that if I take the derivative and then multiply by x over 2, I get the original f back multiplied by some constant lambda. What function has this property? Well, this is not immediately clear. However, I could ask for a specific eigenvalue. So what about lambda equals 1? What function has the property that its derivative multiplied by x over 2 is the same as the original? This I know, the function f of x equals x squared. If I differentiate, I get 2x by the power rule. Then if I multiply by x over 2, the 2s cancel out, and I get x, the x's combined to get x squared, which is the original function again. This function is an eigenfunction specifically for the eigenvalue lambda equals 1 of the operator x over 2 times d over dx. I'm going to stop here, but I'll leave some of these for you to do in the activities. And the key idea of all of this is that the tools of linear algebra apply again in this new environment of differentiable functions. There is one thing that is lost, however, in this new environment, and that's the matrix algorithm. For eigenvectors, I had a really nice algorithm involving a minus lambda identity, determinants, and kernels. For the linear transformations on differentiable functions, I have no such algorithm. The transformations aren't matrices any longer, so I no longer have determinants to help me out. I can only quote unquote solve the problems in this video by recognizing patterns. From my exposure to calculus, I just remembered that certain functions could fit these patterns. And this is fine for examples, but not really good enough for general solutions. To actually solve for these eigenfunctions is quite difficult. This is essentially solving complicated and tricky differential equations. And I'm not going to ask you to do that. In the activities, I'll also provide some questions that only rely on recognitions of patterns from calculus using very common functions. But even though I can't provide a general solution method here, I hope it's a little bit fascinating how the language of transformations and eigenvectors translates into differential operators on differentiable functions producing eigenfunctions.